The central theme of Inside Man is that anyone can be a murderer. You just need a good reason and a bad day. I'm Stephen Moffat, creator and writer of Inside Man. And I'm Dolly Wells, a.k.a. Janice in the show. We've got some impossible situations that we're being forced to respond to and see how we'd react. You're at your best friend's wedding an hour before the ceremony is set to begin. Another guest comes up to you with proof the groom has previously cheated on his bride-to-be with the best man. What do you do? What would you do, Stephen? What I do? I'd say absolutely nothing. That is what I would do. I, I completely nothing. An hour before someone's wedding. It ruined my entire day. <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to a nice wedding. Have a bit of a drink later, and I got to deal with this. I just tell them to sod off, the nosy git. How does he yeah. know what arrangement they have? Maybe they've got an open yeah. relationship. And also, just get modern, kid. And That's an what hour I'd say. as well. Yeah. Like, what can you do if it was? A week or a month or a something. Mm. I wouldn't do that to anybody. People are never grateful to you for doing that. No. I just think you're an absolute asshole. Yes, and you are. And you are. One hour before the wedding, I'd kill him and hide his body in an airing cupboard. You're at the supermarket doing the weekly big shop when you spot someone at the end of the aisle sneaking tins and cans into their bags without paying. Suddenly you recognise it's the local vicar clearly stealing food to put in the local food bank. What do you do? Nothing. What would you do? Absolutely nothing. Well, what it was? It could be a violent vicar. But, it might be a jiu-jitsu vicar. What if I? If I? What if I lost the fight? I would Why? do nothing even before I suddenly recognise it's the local vicar. Yeah, it's not my business. I really take umbrage with people that interfere in a way like that. What over four cans? I personally hate it when someone interferes with my shoplifting. Yeah, I just think it's not your. It's, it's not, not your fair. business. I'm not trying to sneak past you. <laughs> I'm trying to sneak past professionals. <laughs> you leave us amateurs. Just get out of the way. OK, you're climbing Mount Everest. No, really, Dolly, you are. And bad weather <laughs> yeah, no, I have. has meant the expedition is taking longer than expected, making the situation deadly serious. Obviously, they were expecting fine weather up yeah, the mountain. Yeah, yeah, of course. You're running out of food and water when a member of your group trips and sprains their ankle badly. What do you do? Um, I just say, <laughs> well, that's a shame. Um, probably you should favour the other foot. <laughs> uh, I think... Oh, you know what you could say? What? Which is what I think you would say, you just didn't think of this, is you'd say, look what I've got in my bag. I've got one of those beds. Have you seen pictures of those? Mm. That they put up on the side of the mountain and you'd say, just stay there. I'm going to get to the top, win whatever it is I was supposed to yeah. win. And on the way back down, I'll take you down. Alternatively. Yeah. Alternatively. <laughs> you could say, look, we're running out of food. That's and uh, That's my... you've sprained your ankle. You're... Uh... You know, you're not going to make it, are no, you? No, but you've got I mean, a wonderful bottom. Yeah, so why don't you just take one for the team? Yeah. By which I mean, why don't you just die and yeah. eat you? I'll eat you. Yeah. Just one cheek. You live in a sleepy suburb with 11 neighbours. That's a very small suburb, isn't it? One day, 10 of them are bitten by poisonous rats. That is so unlucky. <clears throat> Contracting a painful and fatal disease. The 11th remains unaffected because his leg contains... Wow, golly. It's all so lucky. The 11th remains unaffected because his leg contains antigens that make him resistant to the bite, removing it and liquefying his leg. How would you do that? Could potentially save everyone else's lives. However, that neighbour keeps himself to themselves and refuses to help. What do you do? I've got a couple of questions. If he keeps himself to himself and refuses to help, how would I know that he has antigens that make him resistant to the bite? And how would I know that removing it and liquefying his leg could potentially mm. save everyone else's lives. What would I, you do? i just say, look, can I lick, lick, liquefy your leg? <laughs> I've, I've always wanted to, you know, and uh, I've got the equipment, you know, obviously, according to this scenario, I've got the, the, the leg liquefier. Oh, equipment. And I've never had a chance. I've had it just lying there. But I feel like he might say liquefy your own leg and he would be... Yeah, be but that was enough. really sore. And uh, it'd be better if I liquefied someone else's. I think you wouldn't get past this with Stephen's writing. Like, if he keeps himself to himself, how do we know that? <laughs> <laughs> I think if he keeps himself to himself, he probably doesn't even live in the suburb. He lives much further out. Yeah, yeah. If I had been bitten by a poisonous rat and somebody I'd never met or I knew nothing about could help me if they liquefied their leg, I wouldn't expect that of them, would you? I don't think so. I think that's... A, I would go to the doctor a... or try and get medicine yeah, yeah. or... yeah. I think I think there are unrealistic elements to this. <laughs> <laughs>
delve into the world of our brand new BBC TV series. And listen to Obsessed with Inside Man podcast on BBC Sounds.